All right, let's take a look at uh, another important phase diagram, and it's the iron carbon phase diagram. So I'm going to draw this for you here. And I chose to, to draw it so you can actually see how it's created. I don't want to overwhelm you with the information. So we're going to have temperature on the vertical axis always, composition down here on the horizontal axis. And it's always in, by convention, weight percent of the thing you're adding. So we're most interested in iron. That's the solvent, if you will, and the solute is carbon. So we're going to express the composition in weight percent carbon. Okay, now, there's a few in interesting features on this phase diagram. Um, one of them is there's this, uh, sorry, this isotherm, it's called. It's a horizontal line, okay? Horizontal line. Fancy name for that is horizontal line, right? This means it's got a constant temperature, so you could call it an isotherm, okay? You want to be fancy, and that one occurs at 727. Of course, we've already seen an isotherm in the water sugar system. There's another isotherm that occurs at 1147. There's a transformation that iron, pure iron, goes through at 912 degrees C and it transforms from we're going to see as a body center cubic phase to a face center cubic phase. There's another isotherm up here we don't really worry too much about. And now watch this, without picking your pen up, you can actually draw the iron carbon phase diagram. You can draw a single phase region there, draw this region, boom, and there you go, fantastic. So that's the iron carbon phase diagram at high temperature, obviously we've got liquid, okay. <clears throat> uh, low temperature, we've got some solids, but what are the solids? We've got this alpha phase over here that has a body centered cubic structure. This region here is a face centered cubic. This little one here is called the delta phase, it's body center cubic. We're not going to worry about it much, like I said. And way all, the, all the way over here, well, this is interesting. We're actually not going to go all the way to carbon because 100% carbon is not that useful to us, it's not that interesting to us if we're, you know, using for, for our purposes for building things with steel, for example. In fact, steel, as a rule of thumb, is usually less than one weight percent carbon. So a tiny amount. I and mean, we can have some higher carbon steels, definitely. Um, but typically, it's, it's around that sort of less than one weight percent. So we don't go all the way out to 100% carbon. That wouldn't be useful to us. And it happens that there's a, a phase that forms out here at 6.7 weight percent carbon. And that phase is specifically at 6.7 because it's a compound, Fe3C. So any carbon that doesn't go into solution forms this car this um, compound. The stuff that goes into solution is actually a tiny amount that goes into solution in the alpha phase. So you can identify the two phase regions as we've done before. Drawing a horizontal line left to right. This is going to be alpha plus Fe3C. See if you can predict these before I identify them. This region here is going to be alpha plus gamma. This region here then has to be left gamma, right hand side. Fe3C. This region here, left hand side must be gamma, right hand side liquid. This region here, liquid plus right hand side again, Fe3C. I mean, we're on a roll here. I could identify this one. This one has to be then delta plus liquid. And this little sliver below, I didn't draw it very well, but it's delta plus gamma. Okay, so there's the diagram all drawn in. I haven't given you compositions yet. Now these will be provided on a test, okay, so don't worry about memorizing them. But this is 0.022 weight percent carbon. This composition right here is 0.76 weight percent carbon. This composition is 2.14. And this little one here is 4.3 weight percent carbon. <clears throat> so that's the iron carbon phase diagram in all its glory. And we could do um, a quick little example calculation, or a, a lever rule calculation on this system. So say, for example, um, that I gave you, or we had, a steel alloy, as example, say a 0 0.76 weight percent carbon steel. 
Okay, it's a special kind of steel, actually. It's right at this composition. It's called a eutectoid steel. You don't need to memorize that, but in case you ever come across it, it says it's a eutectoid steel. It refers to this specific composition. And say we did this at 726 degrees C. Could we describe the system? So we've got coordinates, essentially, X and Y. We've got composition. So I know we're right along this red line here at 0.76 weight percent carbon. And we've got this vertical, this Y coordinate, if you will, 726. So I'm going to draw the dot right there. That's where this question that I'm prepare, I'm asking you here is, is uh, taking place, right there. And so what phases are present? Well, you can see you're within the boundaries of this two-phase region, alpha plus Fe3C. So we know there must be alpha plus Fe3C. What are the compositions? Well, the composition of alpha is draw a line over to the leftmost boundary. And if we're just below 727, it's essentially exactly the same as 0 0.022. So it's 0 0.022. Rightmost boundary hits Fe3C. So the composition of Fe3C is 6.7. Incidentally, the composition of Fe3C is always 6.7 because it's a compound, and that's the stoichiometry. All right, last thing we could do, though, is we could say, what's the weight fraction of the alpha phase? Well, if we're interested in this phase on the left, we must take the opposite side of the lever. That is, we must take this side here divided by the total. This dot is closer to the alpha phase, so intuitively you know there has to be more alpha. So if you ever look down on your page and it doesn't make intuitive sense, you've not got more of a phase that you know there should be more of, you've probably just taken the wrong side of the lever. So the weight fraction of the alpha phase then must be 6.7 minus 0 0.76 over 6.7 minus 0 0.022. How about the weight fraction of, I'll leave you to calculate that on your own if you like, weight fraction of, say, the Fe3C. What's the weight fraction of Fe3C? Well, it has to be the other side of the, the lever, right? So that's going to be 0 0.76 minus 0 0.022 divided by 6.7 minus 0 0.022 or 1 minus the weight fraction of alpha, if you've already calculated that. These two weight fractions have to add to 1, because there's only two phases. There's only alpha and Fe3C. All right, so that's a quick uh, look at the iron carbon phase diagram with a little example calculation showing how we can use the Lee rule to determine how much of one phase there is, and also how we can use the composition axis to give us the composition of each phase. All right, thanks a lot.